What's up guys, it's Toby Rosario. So today, I wanted to do a quick video to just to kind of go over and give you guys a, a good overall uh, understanding of what makes up your credit score. And we'll go over it in depth in this video. Um, but before I get started, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell notification, that way you get notified uh, whenever I post a new video. Also, give this video a thumbs up. Give this video a thumbs up. It does help the YouTube algorithm uh, to share this more with more people so more people can watch it and get the same get the same amount of value. So I am logged into um, Credit Karma, right? Um, this is my account. I want to point out a couple of things. So this is a Vantage score. This is just a scoring system. Uh, Vantage 3.0 is a credit scoring model. It takes the information your credit report and turns it into a score. There are many different scoring models, including the ones from FICO and other companies. Each calculate your scores a bit differently, but they all use the information from your credit report. So this this is a Vantage score. This is not your FICO score, right? So a FICO score is what most lenders use when you're when you're looking to obtain like a mortgage, a loan, or car loan, or something like that, right? This is a Vantage score. This is their own uh, independent uh, scoring model, right? So they differ. Uh, so this one is a little bit uh, inflated compared to like a um, a FICO score, actual FICO score. So what you need to understand is um, what you need to understand what makes up your credit score. So I'm going to go into it now. I'm going to go at piece by piece, right? So the biggest thing that makes up your credit score is your payment history. So that's about 35%, all right? 35% of, um, of, your, of your credit score. So it's out of 100%, 35% uh, is a big part of your credit score. So you never want to be late here. Um, if you are late, there are ways you can remove those late payments off your credit report, um, but that is very high impact, right? Um, and then the second thing that impacts your um, your credit report is utilization, so credit card use, right? So as you can see, I'm at 100% payment history. I haven't missed a payment. Um, my credit card usage is 0%. Um, my utilization, as you say, so all of my cards are not uh, they're not being used or they are being used, but they're being paid off before the due date um, and they're, they're getting reporting as their balance, right? So you want to be keep keep mindful of that. So they're going to tell you uh, you want to be under 30 percent, right? Uh, below 30 percent, because after 30 percent, that is going to negatively impact your score. Uh, but the reality is you really want to be either at zero percent or less than uh, you want to be in the single digits, less than 10 percent. Preferably at zero because at zero percent you're gonna be paying zero percent interest, right? If you pay off your balance every single month, you'll pay zero interest, and um, and you don't have to worry about paying interest, and you don't have to worry about it affecting your score. And then and then here derogatory marks. So this is like collections, tax liens, bankruptcies, civil judgments. Uh, so you can see I have zero there. Um, so. You you don't want to have collections obviously on your credit report. Uh, I do have. Um, you, you can't get those collections removed off your credit report. So you can legally, you can remove any negative items off your credit report if they can't verify it or if it's inaccurate, right? So just keep that in mind. If it's um, if it's unverifiable or if it's inaccurate, you can remove those uh, negative items off your credit report, right? And then the other thing that affects your credit score is credit age, right? So, um, so you want to... Uh, have credit, uh, so you see how it has medium impact because technically, um, you know, so how it works is if you get a new card, let's say you have a new, let's say you have a card, right? You get a credit card and you just got it, but then you had a card for like two years, then it averages out your average of your open accounts. So every time you, you get a new card, it's going to, it's going to lower your age. So just keep that in mind. Um, one way to off kind of offset this is to get an authorized user with high age, uh, but I'm always going to be getting credit cards, so I'm not too concerned about this. Um, total accounts. Now, th now this is what most people um, uh, don't really understand. So total accounts is actually good, right? Um, and the reason it's good because it shows, let me just go in here, and I'm going to show you why it's good. So the total number of accounts. So if you don't know, here's a little tip. You actually need a minimum of 21 accounts. Um, to have a perfect credit score. Let me say that say that again, because most people think, oh, I don't need to have all these uh, accounts. So uh, accounts, but you actually need a minimum of 21 accounts, right? You can you can even see it here. This is kind of when when you're in the green, green, that means you're good. 
So having different accounts like credit cards, loans, uh, help your credit, right? Like a mix of accounts. Um, so credit cards, personal loans, auto loans, mortgages. Um, so just keep that in mind. You actually, need the, the more accounts you get, not, not that you should be getting all these accounts if you can't afford it, but just know that the more accounts you get, it actually helps you in the long run because um, it shows that you're able to maintain, um, it shows lenders that you typically that you, you use a variety of accounts responsibly. Does that make sense? You're able to make payments on time over time for a period of, of time and with different type of accounts. Okay. Um, so hard inquiries, hard inquiries are, are, are like when you apply for a mortgage, um, auto loan, um, personal loan, they do a hard pull on your credit to see how your credit score is. So this is, so whenever you pull your credit from like a paid service, like Experian, MyFICO or Credit Karma or Credit Sesame, um, those are soft pulls. They're not pulling your credit they're not doing a hard pull, which can negative, negatively impact your credit score. So hard inquiries, um, they stay on your credit report for two years. Um, it's a temporary thing, and, and you usually bounce back in about three months, um, and they, they automatically fall off after 24 months. So just keep that in mind. Um, and I know a way, to, I know a way to get rid of hard inquiries. I do have a course uh, that teaches how to get rid of hard inquiries on non-open accounts in 24 to 72 hours. Um, they, now, the, as far as the, the, the points affecting you, uh, it really comes down to, so it really depends. So sometimes a, a hard inquiry could be worth three to six points, it, three to 10 points. It really, it's hard to say. Sometimes um, if you get it removed, they can boost your score up like three to seven points, three to 10, 10 points. If you have five inquiries and you get them removed, um, that's, you can get like a 15 point increase. Um, so just keep that in mind, right? So it's credit utilization, payment history, um, new accounts, right? Mix of accounts, and then also inquiries. So you do want to keep your inquiries low. Um, you know, you don't want to keep, the, because if you keep applying for accounts and you have all these inquiries on your accounts, um, it looks like you're credit thirsty to the lenders, right? So you don't want to keep applying, uh, especially if you're getting denied, you want to get those inquiries removed. If you're getting denied on those accounts, you definitely want to get those inquiries removed. You can only remove inquiries on non-open accounts. Okay. So one thing that you can do is to boost your score is to obviously make payments, uh, make on-time payments over time for a period of time. That's number one. Keep your uh, credit card utilization below 10%. Obviously, best case scenario is 0%. Uh, you know, don't get any late payments collections. And if you do have that, you got to get those removed. Um, you got to get those disputed. Um, your age, you really want to be around uh, seven plus. Uh, nine plus is great, right? Um, again, uh, I'm not too concerned about this because I'm always going to be getting credit cards, uh, applying for new cards. Um, so this is always going to be, it's going to always average, um, it's going to get always lower because I'm going to be applying for new accounts. So I'm not too concerned about this. But, um, you know, best case scenario, like as it says here, seven, seven years or more on your on your average age. Um, a trick, a hack to to get high age is to get added as an authorized user for someone who has a credit card for like 10, 12 years, whatever, or 15 years, whatever it is, right? Um, so that's important. And then obviously, again, uh, you want to make on that's just those are the two biggest things you really want to concern yourself with on time payments, right? Payment history, credit utilization, right? And then uh, no derogatory marks. And then then you can get into like mix of accounts, total accounts, and then hard inquiries. But I just wanted to give you guys uh, an example, uh, a real life example. This is my account. I'm going to block out some stuff, um, obviously, so you can't see that. But this is just a general rule um, of how you kind of read your credit report. Again, this is a Vantage score. This is not your actual FICO score. So the score is a little bit inflated, but just wanted to give you guys a real life example. If you guys have any questions, comment below, and I'll do my best to answer those questions. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell notification, and give this video a like. Peace.